he represses you. And a lot of the girls gone through this issue that they were repressed by their father and they weren't able to tell the truth. And then years after, I mean, I'm working with them when they're in their 50s or 60s or 40s or whatever. And now we talk about it and they have to now go to their dad and tell the truth about all these years that they've been repressed. So that's something we all want to look at. Uh, and it's just not like with your dad, that is with your kids. You know, let's say one of your kids manipulating you or bullying you and putting you down or outsmarting you and it's bothering you or your partner is doing it and you really have to speak your truth. There are other times that you have to eat it um, is that politically, strategically, is not in your benefit. I don't know, maybe you're depending on someone, maybe you're living in someone's home, or um, somehow your business, your work is, your whatever you do is tied up to somebody else. And, you know, there are things about them you don't like. And if you tell that, if you speak the truth, they'll kick you out. You have to leave their home or whatever is the situation. So there are times that you have to be smart and you can't really speak your truth. So it's not one formula that applies to everything. But in general, generally, my experience has been that the more I really speak my truth, the more I really walk my own truth, the freer I feel. But you can't always apply this formula to every situation in life. Any comments? Anybody has anything to say? No? Okay. Oh, there you are. Stephanie? <laughs> yes, hi. I, hi. I just wanted to say I'm in total agreement with everything you've said. It depends on the situation. Um, sometimes I do feel handcuffed and I cannot speak my truth. And um, sometimes having those difficult conversations just don't work. And I find, for example, with my mother that I've been my whole life wanting to connect with her. And we love each other deeply, but she's not going to change because she will not, uh, she hasn't done her own personal work like I have. Um, right. uh, for example, we do have some, we have medical physical gifts, sorry, metaphysical gifts that run in the family uh, because of her Catholic upbringing. Um, she has chosen not to develop her gifts where I have embraced mine. Right. And some, sometimes she calls me the devil and other times she wants to sit next to me and hold my hand so right. that I can do some healing with her. Right. Um, and I set aside the, all the other uh, upbringing um, dysfunctions that came along with that. I love her unconditionally. Right. And she's not going to change. And for right. my heart health, I've let a lot of things go. Um, she is who she is, but she loves me may not be the healthiest love, but that's what she has to offer me. Same with my father. Um, right. And I, uh, yeah. I love I, them both. Yeah, I get it. I, uh, I deal with the same situation. My dad's not alive anymore, but when he was alive, and my mom who's alive, thank God. And 
it doesn't matter how many times I say something, they, they're not, they just don't hear it. And it's not going to change them. Uh, it's too late. I mean, unless something happened with divine intervention, maybe change happens for them, but I'm not able to do that. So I just let it go and I eat it. But then, you know, for me is when that happens, so then I need to look at myself. Everything is always for me is like number one is I need to look at myself. That's how I live my life. Okay, so I'm, I get into this situation with someone. There needs to be some kind of alteration. And I feel like they're doing or they're saying something I don't like or it bothers me. Um, I always take a look inside first to see what is it I don't want to look at. What is it that bothers me? Is, that, is it coming from myself? that I'm encountering this person to mirror me and reflect this issue back at myself. And if I can't find anything, then, then the next thing is, okay, God, existence is challenging me to show my patience. I need to, to chill and stay in my center. And because the mind comes and the mind comes and, you know, someone is saying something that you don't agree with, uh, to you, it's completely bullshit. It's completely off and your mind comes and very strongly, and you want to defend this idea you have or whatever it is. And for me is there's sometimes like, okay, what? Where is this coming from? Is this coming from a place that my ego and I need to prove to someone that I'm right? Or I can just let that go and it doesn't matter. So we come back to this thing is that dealing with this issue when speaking about your truth is you can look at it from a lot of different angles. And there is many different things you you are to learn. One is really speaking your truth. Second is not speaking your truth and not get into a lengthy conversation or confrontation. C is is there something I need to look within myself? Uh, D is can I exercise? being silent and not take it as a way that I'm a coward. I don't have the guts to speak my truth, but can I just be indifferent to it? Can I come to this place? Or this is a practice. Is this like I'm doing this to cop out? Am I just not saying anything because I don't have the guts and the courage to stand up? Or I'm just not doing it because I don't feel like getting into a com confrontation. There's a lot of different layers into it. And you're the only one who knows. You're the only person who knows where you're at. Because again, there's not... It's like when people say, and I need to do a podcast about it, is people say, uh, be honest. 